Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this Back to Basics video, we're going to take a look at the Decimate modifier and how we can use it to clean up our models. Let's get into it. The Decimate modifier allows us to reduce the overall geometry of our objects. It has three distinct modes, and I'm going to look at a few different models to help us look at each mode individually. This first model is a sculpture of the bus of Rosa Lohenfeld. I got this object from the Malaposcus Virtual Museums. I'll put a link in the description. To help us better see what's going on with the geometry, I'm going to go ahead and enable wireframe in our viewport display. Let's go ahead and add a decimate modifier. The first mode we're going to look at is the collapse mode. This collapses edges based on length, trying to preserve the overall shape of the object. The ratio shows us the ratio of newly created faces to original faces. So when the ratio is 1, no faces have been removed. When the ratio is 0.5, half of the faces have been removed, and when it's zero, all of the faces, save one, will have been removed. So in this case, the original model has 60,395 faces. If I drop this to 0.5, it drops to 30,391. The face count generally won't be exact, especially on more complicated models, due to the way that tries, quads, and n-gons decimate, but it will be close. As you slide this down, you'll see the object gets more and more decimated. If you only want to decimate part of your object, you can use a vertex group for control of that. In this case, if I go into weight paint mode, you'll see that I've added a weight paint to the face of the sculpture. Now if I choose that vertex group and lower the ratio, you'll see that it completely obliterates the face. That's not what I was going for. I'd actually like to reverse the effect of this vertex group, so I'll click the double arrow button. That's better. Now you can see the face geometry has been preserved, while the rest of the object has been decimated. There is a sweet spot where the decimated geometry can no longer interface with the original geometry, and once this point is reached, the preserved geometry will also start to be affected. The factor option also controls how much the vertex group will be affected by the ratio. For the symmetry and triangulate options, let's jump over to another model. For objects that are symmetrical, like this Suzanne monkey, as we reduce the ratio, you'll see that they can very quickly become asymmetrical. However, if you need to retain the, the symmetry of an object, choose the symmetry option, and then choose the axis for which the symmetry should be preserved. In this case, we want to preserve across the x-axis. So now as we reduce the ratio, we'll see that anything that is applied to one side is applied to the other, making the object remain symmetrical. By default, the decimate modifier tries to retain quads as long as possible on our models. However, if you'd like to immediately change all quads to triangles and all n-gons to triangles, click the triangulate button. As soon as you lower the ratio below 1, all faces will be triangles. Sticking with our Suzanne monkey, let's change to the unsubdivide option. By default, our Suzanne monkey has 500 faces. So let's go ahead and add some iterations to our unsubdivide modifier. Immediately, the model is pretty heavily deformed. And if we continue, it just gets worse. That's not really how the unsubdivide method is meant to work. Instead, first, let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to this object. Now I'm going to apply this modifier. We now have about 8,000 vertices. It's not exactly 8,000 because of the way tries and n-gons subdivide. But the subdivisions have happened in a very calculated way. If you've subdivided and applied a subdivision to a model and want to reverse that process, you can use the decimate modifier using the unsubdivide method. So here we have approximately 8,000 vertices. Unsubdividing once takes us to 4,000, twice takes us to about 2,000, three times down to 1,000, and four times takes us back to our original approximately 500. Again, due to the fact that the Suzanne model has about 32 triangles in it, these numbers won't be exact, but they will be very close, and the geometry will be extremely close to the original. Finally, let's take a look at this object. There's nothing really special about this object, except that it does have a lot of extra geometry that we don't need, and could be a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and add a decimate modifier. If we use the standard collapse mode, 
there comes a point where our object starts to be distorted. And on a hard surface model like this, we really don't want our model to be distorted at all. We could try the unsubdivide method, but that really doesn't work either. So finally, there's the planar method. The planar method uses an angle limit to determine what sections should be made into flat faces. Any edge above this angle will be retained. It will also create geometry in order to support certain types of faces, like here. Of course, you may have some special cases. On this object, if I turn on face normals, you'll see that the top two faces on here are pointing in the opposite direction. If I use the delimit normal option, you'll see that enough geometry is added back in to support those faces that have differing normals. If I want to turn off this normal option, I simply have to shift click on it. Next is materials. Here's my original object. It has this ring around the outside and then this shape on the top. When I enable my decimate modifier, you see that that gets messed up quite a bit. But if I choose material, it'll use the boundaries of the material to show what geometry to leave on our object. So if I were to duplicate this and apply this modifier, you would see that the proper geometry has been created. Next, I've added a seam to the center line of this object. If I choose the seam option, you'll see that that seam is now preserved in the geometry. The same thing with this sharp marking. And finally, here's some UVs. This little island is this shape here. If I choose UVs, you see that both my UV seam and this other small island have been preserved. Of course, your model might have all five of these. And so in that case, just shift click on each one. And all the appropriate geometry will be preserved in your planar decimation. If you're using really high angle limits, you may want to enable the all boundaries option which dissolves any vertices along the boundaries of faces. So that about wraps it up for the decimate modifier. I hope this clears up any confusion you might have had about the different modes. So thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're finding this series helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.